there is no other question, uh, you may start uh, whenever you want, Marcos. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Marcos and together with David, we are going to give this seminar uh, on Cypion 4 facilities. First of all, I'd like to give a reminder of the concept of uh, streaming. Streaming, we mean uh, by streaming the image processing as movies are acquired by the, by the microscope. Uh, it comprises from acquisition to uh, particle picking and sometimes also includes 2D classification and if the sample is friendly, some uh, initial model 3D classific classification uh, programs. The main advantage of streaming is that it provides a real a real time feedback of the acquisition process for the facility, also provides a real time feedback for the user, reduces processing times uh, by overlapping all these steps, and um, for the facility, uh, they offer a, uh, because they offer a better quality service uh, to the user, so it becomes an added value for the facility. In this seminar, we'll talk about the solutions that Cypion can provide to, uh, to streaming uh, in facilities. Cypion, for those who don't know it, is an image processing framework that integrates state-of-the-art software packages for cryo -EM. Um Not only for single particle, uh, but also um, in the new version that will be released soon. It will include support also for, to, uh, for tomogram reconstruction and subtomogram averaging. Cypion, uh, therefore, it integrates many uh, software packages in a single interface uh, thought for uh, structural biologists, uh, software developers that uh, want to implement their own software and also for uh, facilities. Cypion installation, uh, especially this new version, is, uh, has been simplified. In case you want to, to know more about uh, Cypion 3 and, and to trade out uh, a beta version, you, you can follow this tutorial given by Pablo Conesa in the, in the last uh, seminar uh, of, the, of the series. And one of the uh, Cypion has been conceived as a platform for software integration, where Cypion would stand as the main uh, application, let's say, and uh, the different software packages would work as plugins and that would connect to, to Cypion to, to add functionalities. The idea behind this is that uh, whenever a developer releases a new version of the plugin, you won't need to update Cypion only that plugin and, and also it will allow you to choose which plugins uh, do you want to, to install. A, spe a special mention is for this uh, plugin here, oriented to facilities that we, as, we, as I will show you later, includes many monitors uh, for the uh, tracking of the acquisition in real time. So, uh, Cypion uh, allows the execution of workflows uh, of, uh, of different uh, by combining different image processing packages. Uh, Cypion takes care of format compatibility by converting output and input formats to make it readable for the for the different programs. Also, uh, it can work with open sets. That means an open set is a set in which uh, whenever a new element of a protocol, let's say a new movie aligned, is uh, ready for, uh, so it's completed, is uh, accessible for the next element of the workflow, for example, CTF estimation. Also, Cypion um, keeps track of everything you, you, you do during your processing, including all the commands that have been uh, submitted, uh, errors, and so on. So you can keep track of all the entire uh, project. Also in this table, you can see a brief uh, sample of the um, many programs that Cybe uh, includes from movie alignment, CTF estimation, picking, and so on. In this uh, from movie alignment to extraction, uh, all the programs listed here work perfectly in, in streaming. Um, due to the high number of programs that Cypion integrates, one uh, of the main features of Cypion compared to other programs for uh, streaming processing 
is the uh, capability of making your own workflows. We define a workflow as an interconnected protocols where the output of a previous one becomes the input of the next in an automated manner. This workflow can be as simple or complex as you want. For example, in this here we have a simple workflow that includes uh, import movies, uh, movie al uh, alignment, and CTF calculation. But it can get um, as complex as you, as you want. For example, here we have added some uh, steps of particle picking. And of course, uh, you can uh, make your own workflow that comprises the whole pipeline from import movies to uh, post-processing. So uh, for the point of view of the facilities, they can uh, use a standard or basic workflow for the, for the user, or they can ask the, 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 the user prior to the visit which programs uh, they would like to use to, to make them a workflow that adapted to, the, to their preferences. So, uh, in order to do these workflows, there's no coding needed for it, just uh, as we will see later, it's all made with, through the graphical user interface. And i like to say that there is a um, workflow repository where you can upload the, the workflows you, you do or download the workflows that the community has uh, have, uh, uploaded. Uh, another uh, interesting tool in Cypium is the consensus. Consensus are protocols that combine estimations where at least two different algorithms agree uh, from the same input data. In this case, for example, uh, there is a protocol for CTF consensus where uh, it compares the estimations made from two different programs, for example, CTF find 4 and GCTF. Uh, this consensus together with uh, picking consensus uh, work perfectly in streaming so they can be added to your workflows for more robust estimation and uh, they add an extra level of quality check in the uh, in the workflow there are other consensus but at the level of uh, 3d classification angular assignment and and local ctf estimation but they are not can be used but not they can be used but not in streaming so um, uh, other of the main, uh, we, we talked before about the, the specific plugin for facilities. These plugins uh, comprises a lot of uh, monitors that, that track, keep track of um, system usage, GPU, memory usage, this activity, network usage, but also uh, CDF parameters, the focus stigmatism, resolution. Uh, you can see um, thumbnails of micrographs and also keep track of the stability of the game. The advantage of this is that you have a um, real-time scenario of the or picture of the acquisition that allows you to take informed decisions on the fly, make a rapid diagnosis to change or adjust uh, acquisition parameters, and also follow up the session from the web browser, uh, also for the, for the operator of the, micro or of the microscope, but also for the user through a simple URL um, address. Also, you can set email alerts if acquisition parameters uh, are above or below a predefined threshold. So now I'm going to... Um, we are moving to the uh, demonstration, practical demonstration of the Cypion capabilities. First of all, this is the... Uh, Cybion interface here, uh, you can, you have the, uh, a menu bar. On the left side, you have uh, all the different protocols grouped by, by the, the, the step they take, for example, uh, from Impro Movies, uh, Movie Alignment, CTF Calculation and Preprocessing of Micrographs, Peaking, uh, 2D Classification, 3D Classification, and, and more. In this a panel you can see you will see a summary of the uh, every step we we take and a log of uh, the commands that are running and in this main screen you will see the the workflow that we are going to to import now first of all i would like to if you click in project search workflow 
you will go to the workflow repository where you can see all the different workflows uploaded by the by the community in group also by uh, the the type of of processing from 2D refinement classification, uh, 3D classification, or data collection. If you click in one of them, you can see a um, overview of the of what the workflow includes. Just download it, and you can import afterwards. To import a, a workflow, just click in project, import workflow, move to the folder where you downloaded the, the workflow. It's a JSON archive, JSON file. And this is how it looks like. And now the the state of the workflow is idle, is you know, it's not has not been executed yet. So you click right click and edit, you can point the file directory folder to, to where the movies are, where EPU or the acquisition software store the the, the images. Here you set the acquisition parameters and the game image. And once um, it's um, the other parameters of the of the other protocols, they are set by default or with the values you you prefer. And then just click in restart workflow to make it work. The state will change to a schedule and we see that uh, import movies changes to launched, and we'll see the micro graphs in, in a few seconds appearing here. It detects the 12, 200 items. And then when the output of the import movies is ready, motion core will uh, start moving uh, aligning movies. As soon as the first uh, micro graph is ready, both uh, CTM54 and the picking program will start uh, doing their jobs. And in the meantime, we can check the the output that is generating. It might be the case during the, the acquisition that you notice that some parameter is not well adjusted. For example, in this case, the resolution range for the for the CTF is not um, as it's not a, as extended as it could be. So the resolution is being uh, underestimated. So in that case, in that scenario, you can easily stop the, the workflow by right clicking in the in the box editing the corresponding value in this case here and then resume the the pipeline So this is how a, a simple workflow would work. And this, in principle, would, would be fine for a, um, a session and a pre-processing of the data generated during the session. But um, uh, although this is, um, should, might be enough, for those cases where something unexpected during the acquisition happened, maybe a more complex workflow would be um, useful to to detect possible um, um, accidents that could came up and and save the session. So now we are going to simulate a more complex workflow to see uh, the different checkpoints that uh, Cybion offers. So, by the way. Cypion can be executed through through command line. Actually, this uh, we are going to execute not only Cypion three but also the, the whole workflow through command line. This would be the Cypion three template and some other parameters here. Mm. 
it will take some seconds to to load and launch all the workflow. Okay, so this would be the the new workflow. Here we are simulating um, an acquisition uh, of uh, a real-time acquisition where the, um, now the the workflow is, is importing movies. Movies are now available for movie alignment and the, the classic pipeline, but we have introduced some checkpoints that we are going to comment step by step. You can see that the, complete, the, the workflow is way more complex than the, the previous one. So the first Checkpoint is called uh, it's a check game. If we edit the parameters, it's a kind of supervisor that every 250 movies uh, it calculates uh, the gain after this number of movies and will compare this calculated gain with the gain that you provided at the beginning of the of the protocol and and. The idea behind this, although the, the game is something rather um, stable on the acquisition, it's useful as an additional checkpoint to, to see if there is something wrong happens with it. And in case of uh, the game has uh, changed over the session, you can stop it and, and correct whatever it's needed. So this would be the first check. Another check would be movie shift, where you can set a maximum tolerated frame uh, to frame shift and or if you prefer a maximum movie shift and those movies uh, with a, an accumulated movement uh, or, or frame to frame movement that exceeds this limit will be uh, automatically discarded and if the number of discarded uh, micro graphs in, increases over the number of or, or good, mi good uh, micrographs could be an indicative of, of drift in the in the microscope. So after that, we go to the first uh, consensus protocol in the workflow that is the one they mentioned before, CDF consensus. This protocol takes into account the, the CTF estimations of two different programs. In this case, GCTF and a second program. A second uh, algorithm, in this case, is uh, CTF estimation. The idea is that you set uh, some uh, restrictions in terms of the focus, uh, maximum resolution, or minimum resolution, sorry, maximum astigmatism, uh, where two different programs, two different algorithms uh, coincide. And if the estimation has been made with XMIP, it will also calculate an, another validation criteria like uh, ice thickness or um, the, the, uh, the resolution value at which the astigmatism in the micrographs is, going, is starting to be limiting. And also XMIP uh, calculates uh, the envelope of the, of the CTF. If we move downstream on the protocol, we arrive to another consensus, picking consensus, that works similarly to, to the CTF consensus here. You can uh, introduce as input the outputs of more than one uh, picking program. And you can, by this parameter here, whose values are explained in the, in the, in the help button, you can either pick those, uh, uh, keep those coordinates uh, that has been detected by both programs or only uh, one of them. If you want to be, it's sometimes happens that one uh, algorithm might detect um, different views or views that another algorithm has not detected. So one, cho one choice would be keeping all the coordinates picked by any of the program picking pickers and then you will uh, clean the data in the 2D classification. But 
Another option could be keeping only those coordinates that has been detected by both um, picking programs. In that case, uh, in, in this example, we will follow this branch where the uh, picked coordinates has been uh, will be downsampled, then uh, will be a screen uh, to eliminate uh, eliminate um, bad particles based on uh, statistical um, based on statistics, and when a certain number of particles is ready. This can be said by the operator, in this case, uh, 5,000 uh, particles. They will be submitted to, to the classification. To the classification, as we said previously, uh, is not prepared for streaming, but there is a, a feature included in Cyping which GL2D can, uh, once the 2D classification uh, with the 5,000 particles uh, finishes, uh, GL2D can take the, a new batch of incoming particles and sort them in, in, the, in the classes generated by Relion. So th this could be useful in, in the case of, in case of uh, bad um, classes that noisy classes without any particle. If you see that they start growing very fast, that might be an indicative of uh, a bad region on the micrograph and maybe it's uh, worthy to, to move to another square, for example. And finally, this is the monitor summary. This is um, one of the, this is included in the, in the uh, Sapium facility uh, plugin. <laughs> and it collects the output of several um, protocols like import movies, check gain, and so on. And it generates a HTML report where you can follow the, the, the statistics. Also, you can set uh, alarms and whenever a, a movie or astigmatism or defocus or whatever goes out of uh, this predefined range, you can get a, a, a warning in form of an email. So we can open the monitor. And here you have the acquisition parameters, also histograms uh, with the resolution reported by the CTF, the focus range, can make a real-time follow-up of the resolution values, the focus, and also a list of the uh, th thumbnails with the micrographs shift plots, a more useful parameter that will allow to the, uh, to the facility manager to take informed decisions on, on whether it's or not necessary to adjust the acquisition or move to another um, place of the, of the grid, or for example, increases the, the settling time of the stage or, or wherever it's necessary. So with all of this, the user will have the um, uh, a, a preprocess and data set with uh, with robust uh, and double check uh, methods so it can uh, go back home and process the, the data there but with a good service so now we are uh, uh, the david will take over to explain you more about the 2D classification in streaming and other important IT, IT issues that may interest for the facility. So, well, Carlos, if you can. Okay, I will. So, just a second. Where are you? Here. So, you're now presenter, yeah. David. Yes. Uh, maybe the starting. Onto the screen, allow. Okay, I will start. I think it's not sharing. No. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Now it's starting. Okay. 
Sorry for this time. <laughs> Not yet? No, we cannot see your screen. I don't know why it's not sharing. It says that it's sharing, but not. I don't know if this is too much, but going out and in the system, or maybe I can I can share my screen again, and if you need to to move forward forward I can change the slide yeah okay uh, let me let me check to go out and get get in again okay Okay, here again. I already made you presenter. Yeah. Yes, no. no. Okay. Okay, here is the the workflow that Marcos presented you. Uh, first of all, I will I want to to answer some questions that uh, uh, we get in the in the chat. One was uh, regarding to make workflows and not using a template because this this workflow here uh, have been done using a template, but also we can uh, generate a workflow on the fly. For instance, if you want to I don't know to add some protocol here, we can add that protocol just by picking the, the or selecting the input that we want to use to perform that, that protocol. So just executing that, that protocol, I don't know what I'm doing, but the point is that when you execute that protocol, the box will appear and also will work in a streaming and will start to processing data and the streaming is flowing also. Okay. One another question that we get uh, was regarding to the, the difference between the, the reset and the restart. So when you put, uh, when you click uh, with the right uh, button on the mouse, Okay, you have here restart and reset. Reset is restarting the, the or, or is removing the data uh, of the protocols, but doesn't um, launch the protocols again. And this can be useful uh, if you realize that some parameters here uh, below that protocol, uh, you want to, to to set again because um, to modify, for instance, if you want to modify the, the CTF find four and the GCTF, you can reset from from moving max shift, and then you can um, change these two parameters in, in in different protocols, and then relaunch the workflow again. Okay. Uh, well, as work, uh, as Marco said. Here we have uh, the 2D classification as, as uh, it has been started, but we, ha uh, we have not arrived uh, yet to, to have uh, 2D uh, classes yet. So let me return to the, to the slides presentation that are here. So Marcos have explained it a bit, but I will uh, 
uh, explain it again more, more, more in deep, as, as you have seen, uh, we need a trigger that ensure us that we have enough particles in order to start a 2D classification. And as you have seen, when this, um, no, no, this amount of particles are ready, the 2D classification starts. But as you know, the, the 2D classifiers, the common 2D classifiers like CryoSpark or XMIP or Relion, uh, works not in a streaming, needs a, a closed set of particles and when uh, after a while uh, the, the protocols finishes and then um, they generate a closed set of classes. So that is not working in a streaming, but we can use the, the that closed classes as a starting point for the GL2D. So, well, uh, just to note, uh, here we are using several different uh, uh, classifiers, but it's up to you to use one of them, like CryoSpark or Relion or XMIP in the, in the, in the example below, in the, in, the, in the demonstration that is working uh, in background, we have uh, using Relion, but you can use CryoSpark or a combination of them. But the point is that when we have uh, some initial uh, classification, then the GL2D is, is continuously assigning particles from the streaming, uh, assigning, uh, continuously assigning one certain class that was produced by these initial classifications. So at the end of the acquisition, um, um, the user, or, or at the end of the acquisition, all the particles will end to a one certain class. So uh, the user at the end will have all the, all, all the particles classified in one of the classes. But it's more important in the facility sense, the, um, the, the introduction of a quality check. For, because as, as Marco said, uh, we, uh, when we classify uh, particles, we uh, very often we get uh, some classes that, that look like uh, true particles, but some other classes doesn't look like particles because are full of, of background noise or, or are, are contaminants or are, are over the ice. So <clears throat> we, uh, as, as the GL2D is classifying during the whole acquisition, then we can monitor the, the population of these classes. So if we suddenly say says that that one of if we suddenly say that the um, the bad classes are increasing more than the good classes, the population of the bad classes are increasing more than the population that the bad classes. This can mean that uh, we are um, acquiring data in a bad region of the grid or over the ice or whatever. But it's, this introduces a quality check on our, our acquisition. And at this point, as we have, as we have um, classi uh, an initial classification, we can select those good classes in order to trigger um, to trigger uh, an initial volume that we call that is a preliminary initial volume because it's done uh, with with the first bunch of, of data but but the idea is to to give us an idea of of how is the quality of the data the data that we are acquiring well, another feature that, as always in Scipion, is optional, is the, the possibility to make an NPR submission. And then uh, the NPR pr uh, plugin includes include, uh, this, this protocol that fills for you uh, the NPR uh, form. And one important thing that you can see here is the NPR policy um, allow us to, to set a, a peri an embargo period of time in order to, to hit the, 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 the data before to publish there and publish there. At this point, is 
uh, one can think that uh, this is more sensitive for finer users when they finish their processings, but it can be also interesting for facilities because, for, for example, here in the, in the CNB, in our facility, we take uh, some projects from the Instru uh, or under the Instru project and following the, the policy, the European, the community European policy, uh, we should or we must uh, public the, uh, all, the inform all the data that is acquired under the a public funding. So this, this protocol can, can facilitate this task of publishing the data, or, uh, again, taking this embargo time and, and, and so on. Okay. Uh, so uh, this protocol uh, take for you the acquisition data uh, from the uh, like sampling rate or, or the, the dose per frame and also is taking the user data like for, for the PI or for the corresponding author. And not only this, but also uh, we can upload the raw data and also the, mm, the already processed data like the micrograph, the CTFs, the particles, or even the, the classes or the averages. Well, as, as always, this is totally up to you to include more or less a set of, of data here, but uh, another possibility is not only to update uh, the data, but also the workflow of, of the, during the acquisition. So, for example, in, in this NPR entry, there are the, not only the, the movies here in this, in this part, you can see it, and we are updated not only the movies or the micrograph, but also the workflow.json that includes include, uh, the, the whole workflow that has been used during the acquisition. So, uh, here are all the parameters uh, set during the acquisition. So, the, in this way, the traceability and the reproducibility is kept on the time. <clears throat> so, another important point for... Okay, sorry, I, I thought that it was a question. Okay, um, an impor another important point here is Okay, we are um, making uh, uh, a quite complex uh, workflow in order to introduce quality checks of our acquisition. But uh, at the same time, we are <clears throat> we are um, generating a lot of valuable information or valuable data for the user. So, in this point, we can we can provide users uh, not only with the raw movies but also with the Cypium project. So Cypium projects uh, are self-contained um, directories where, that uh, contain all the uh, information uh, in, inside except for the raw movies. So uh, you must to provide both the raw movies and, and the, the Cypium project. So, but the, uh, the point is when the user arrives to their institution, then they can take the, the Cyprium project and their own movies and can import them in their own Cyprium. And then and their uh, starting point is not uh, the, the, from the beginning, from the movies, but they can use all the processed data that you have provided, like the, the aligned micrograph, the CTF, or even the particles and the classes, as we have seen. Well, so the resources that are needed to follow the online on the fly processing, uh, it's difficult to, to give some fixed numbers because uh, you have seen that the, the, the workflows are very customizable. But to, to give some numbers uh, for a work, workflow from movies to, to the classification with an acquisition ratio of uh, eight movies per minute, 
using a, a movies from the key three in super resolution, we need a 30 uh, CPUs uh, machine with 128 gigabytes of RAM and four GPUs. And also it's very important to have a solid state disk because uh, during the, the streaming acquisition, a lot of information is being writing and reading. So uh, in order to, to be able to follow up the, the acquisition uh, rate, then uh, a solid state disk is, is, is needed. But as you know, the solid state disk uh, are quite small. So for that reason, we recommend, it's optional, but we strongly recommend to have another conventional disk uh, of um, more bigger in order to, to storage the, the already processed um, projects from previous sessions. It's important to note also that Cypion is able to work in computer clusters and under uh, a queue system. So if this is your situation, please don't hesitate to contact us in order to feed Cypion to your uh, system configuration. Well, <clears throat> um, now let's see how uh, Cypion can be integrated with your session manager software. Well, Cypion is coded in, in, in Python and Python is very scripting friendly. And uh, in addition, Cypion was designed uh, as a API from the beginning. So this make uh, quite easy, uh, quite easy integration to, to your session manager software. For instance, um, we know that in the European, uh, in the European Synchrotron, they use ASPI-B uh, with together in uh, Cypion and both uh, are communicating. In, uh, indeed, um, Cypion has a, a plugin that is for, for, for make that connection. And that plugin was, was called, was developed by, by, by the Synchrotron, Europe, the European Synchrotron uh, IT from Olaf. For but uh, also in, in our facility in, in, in the CMB, we are using the EM admin that is a, a software that is, is called by ourselves. And again, is, is common, is, 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 well, I, I will explain it in the next slide. And also in the SciLife lab is using uh, their own um, software in order to integrate Cypion uh, to their session manager software. Also, Cypion can be uh, integrated or can communicate can communicate uh, with the acquisition softwares like APU and, and Serial Email. Well, <clears throat> just an example, uh, the software that we are using in, in our facility in the CMV is called EM Admin and is used in order to, to manage the users. Uh, it's making registration of the users, scheduling the, the sessions and so on. Also, it is, is managing the directory structure of, of the computer uh, and, and the projects and also is taking the acquisition data from the APU, as I will explain in the, in the next slide. Also, uh, it's providing some statistics that are very interesting and very, very important for, for the facility uh, managers. And also, in addition, uh, the EM admin is providing a workflow list in order to, to be able to, to, to to give to uh, the user that list uh, to select. So at the end, the user can select among of a list of workflows. And also we, 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 can, we, we can incorporate to the workflow the, 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 the package or the, or the method that user uh, prefer or, or, or needs. Also the EM admin is, launch, is automatically launching Cypion. You can see the, the code here in, in this GitHub uh, repository. Well, just to, to, to be a bit more in detail on, on, on this pipeline that we have in the CMB for the Talos uh, microscope, 
and the users are registered themselves or, or what uh, are registered in the EM admin and EM admin schedule um, uh, and a lot of time for for the acquisition and when that are, uh, they arrive then the, the the facility manager define uh, well, start the, the acquisition or, or, or define the acquisition um, by by getting in focus or calculating the the or acquiring the the gain, but when when the acquisition is ready, then the acquisition starts and the movies are being generated. At that moment, the EM admin uh, generate uh, uh, the project, the, the, um, yeah, generate the project according to the user's um, uh, data and, and the user selection of the of the workflow, and also takes the acquisition data like the sampling rate, the dose, the dose, uh, the dose per frame, uh, and, and so on. So <clears throat> in this way. Uh, a project is created like uh, like the Marcos have uh, shown you just before in the demonstration and then is starting to 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 processing the movies and as you can see here all this happens inside the the local network but at this point we create the summary monitor the HTML report that can be published in a public in a public URL, and then the, the acquisition can be follow follow um, and using a, a regular browser in uh, using a, a web guide. And additionally, <clears throat> we have include in the. Uh, um, yeah, we will have include uh, some some sensors in order to make some statistics like a uh, room temperature, room room um, magnetic field, or even in case temperature and in case uh, magnetic field. So that that statistics can be included to uh, in the in the Cypion workflow. Or, or, or project in order to be to be reported with the HTML report. Well, this was just an example of, of how to set a Cypion in 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 a, in a facilities pipeline. But then we, uh, there are uh, as many examples as as many uh, facilities use Cypion. And here you can see uh, the different facilities that are daily, well, in, in green are those facilities that are daily using Cypion, and in yellow and in gray are those that are interested in. Well, so to sum up, um, we have seen how uh, um, Cypion is able to pr uh, process data on the fly using uh, streaming workflows, and how it can integrate different EM packages in, uh, and how this increase the possibilities uh, when making uh, workflows and also allowing to make consensus between different EM packages or EM um, methods. Also, we have seen how uh, Cypion doesn't have a unique and monolithic uh, workflow, but uh, we have a, a, a very customized um, platform in order to, to make wor uh, workflows uh, without uh, needing any coding skills. And also we have the, the, the public repository of, of templates, but also users can, can users or um, um, facility managers can define um, their own templates. On the other hand, we have seen how Cypion uh, includes multiple quality checks in almost every processing step. We are monitoring the effectively gain uh, stability, also the movie drift and the CTF parameters and so on. So on. And as, as um, Cypion is working in workflows and all the parameters that are set in, uh, in that workflows um, keep or are still uh, stored there, then we uh, have a high traceability or, or we provide a high traceability and, and high reproducibility of the project, the Cypion projects. Also, we have seen how we are able to make automatic MPR submissions and how we can import and export um, uh, projects. Also, 
the 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 API um, the main uh, an API of Cypion uh, facilitate a lot the integration of the Cypion in the session manager softwares. And of course, we um, provide a strong support not only by email, but also we have a private uh, a Slack channel for those facilities that are interested in implement uh, Cypion. For further work, we are working to improve that quality checks because uh, we we understand that is the most important uh, thing for the facilities because uh, the quality of the acquisition is 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 is, 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 is the important thing here. Uh, so we are working to to include uh, particle picking monitor and uh, to the classify uh, to the classes monitor. Also, we are working. We are almost there to introduce Grafana the Grafana software in order to make the summary monitor. We have seen the, the HTML report that is reporting all the important all the yeah, all the important thing for 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 during the acquisition. But uh, the Grafana provide a more flexible monitoring because uh, the, the information at, at the beginning is the same because you, you, you have uh, so here, for instance, the, the CTF parameters, but all that panels uh, can be moved or you can turn that, that panels or, or, or you can include more, more, more charts or whatever uh, in, in a very flexible way. Also, we are working on the availability to map back uh, processing information to the atlas. This is, if this is the atlas, we are working on uh, overlay uh, to the atlas uh, a CTF parameters heat map. For instance, uh, is to, to, to see where the, the, the focus or, or the stigmatism or even the, the resolution is, 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 more, is higher or lower in which region. Also, we can or we are working to, to plot also a heat map of particle den, uh, particles density over these, these atlas. In the, also now uh, we are working also in the in the big data management and how we can compress on the fly uh, information not only to 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 save space that is very important but also to to improve the performance of of the workflow and and, and the proceeding and of course we are we are involved to the EER format in order to give support uh, in, through Cypion. And, and we are very open to, to your suggestion, su uh, suggestions in order to increase or, or improve Cypion and to, to fit there uh, or to fit in Cypion your your needs or or this. Well, just to finish, uh, say that uh, the Cypion is a very big uh, team that mostly is in, in the Instruct Image Processing Center in Madrid, but also a lot of work is done uh, in, in the SciLife Lab, in the MRC, and also in the McGill uh, University. And also we have uh, um, a lot of, of, of collaborators. Uh, for that reason, we want to acknowledge all of them, that uh, all of our partners that are here list. And <clears throat> well, just before finish, let's see how the demo is going on. So returning to the demo, okay, perfect. Here you can see how the, the trigger, well, this has been seen before, but the trigger have finished because, let me show this. When 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 the trigger have arrived to five thousand, they uh, it have uh, released that uh, set, and then then the real ion to the classifier to to the classification have started and have generated thirty two classes. So we can see how that that classes look like. Um, we can see that some of that classes look like uh, particles. And yeah, some of them are not uh, um, 
do doesn't look like particles, as, as is, is very typical in, in 2D classification. Okay, this is a static, but now this uh, GL2D is taking that averages from the relyon and is taking, uh, let me show you better, okay, but is taking is continuously taking the particles from the from 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 the streaming branch and uh, at this moment there are uh, the 88000 particles classified in these 32 classes for instance we can see okay the population of of, of the, the 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 most populated classes uh, are still the, the good ones, so does, this means that the, the acquisition is going well. But if we see that these classes are coming up, this um, should me, uh, might mean that we are that some problem is in the acquisition. Okay, for instance, we can see also that uh, the quality check on the CTF. For instance, this is very interesting. Okay, we see that uh, there are, well, here is better. We are uh, 176 uh, CTF that look uh, good, but 21 looks uh, that have some problems. For instance, here we have the summary. So uh, five of them uh, seems that uh, has uh, some astigmatism or an astigmatism uh, larger than 1,000, and when f nine of them are below the four Armstrong resolution, and here we have we see that uh, some of them has uh, seems to to have uh, some eyes over the the micrograph, for instance, and this is the consensus. This means that uh, the the two the two the two well, the, the two CTF estimation, estimations are not uh, in agree uh, below the four Armstrongs. For that reason, we say, okay, that are not good uh, CTF estimations. Okay, you can see this, uh, the, the good ones or the, the valid CTFs and the discarded ones using uh, this. And for instance, here, well, we see, well, it seems good, but well, maybe as for astigmatism, this we have one, one history. Uh, uh, in, in one, when what we was um, installing Cypion in one facility, and when we was uh, checking that all was working well, we realized that a lot of micro has has um, uh, had um, astigmatism and in this situation the the facility manager was realizing in, in that moment that it has uh, an astigmatism problem there so it, it is a very important quality check also the the match shift that uh, is checking that the drift is going well well, here is not one uh, discarded, so it's fine. Okay, so returning to uh, maybe here, yeah. That's all just to finish and uh, give some contacts or, or so for general questions, uh, Marcos, uh, you can address to Marcos and for IT related questions, you can address myself or Pablo Conesa. <clears throat> and also, as I said, uh, I have seen before, um, and we have a Slack uh, framework in order to give a direct channel to to facilities for, to the facilities that use Cypion. And also, if you want to be in touch, you can subscribe to to the, this to our uh, mailing list, or also we have this general purpose uh, mail. Also, for those that are interested in developing um, a plugin or, or to developing code for Cypion, also we have this uh, GitHub um, repository that is our uh, starting point or our community um, development community. So, 
That's all. Uh, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to, to tell. One moment, I, I, I will put my fear points. Okay. Okay, again, please. <laughs> no, I, I was checking the the chat whether ah, okay, okay. answered uh, questions. So there is a so GL2D is creating 2D classification jobs or something else. So it, it is not creating jobs. So uh, there are two protocols or there are different ways of working in Cypion. One of them is the one that Gregory has in mind. That is, uh, that is one that creates a small batches of, of the input particles. So uh, you can create uh, groups of, of every 10,000 particles and then each 10,000 particles are classified. Uh, independently, that was developed by Jose Miguel in, in Estocolm. But uh, GL2D is uh, working differently. So it, it is a single job, and as new particles arrive, they are classified into one of the existing classes. So at the end, you simply have, when everything finishes, you simply have to take those classes that you like and create a new set of particles without bothering in uh, looking for uh, different protocols. Then yeah. XMIP autos, yeah. No comment. XMIP auto select selects good classes automatically, and it does. And for that, uh, we use uh, the, the same uh, algorithm that uh, was uh, checking whether particles were empty. So, for instance, it has not been shown in this uh, in this um, uh, demo. But there is a protocol of XMIP that can eliminate empty particles. And we use that same algorithm to detect uh, which particles, uh, which classes are well-centered and they don't have uh, anything around or they are not empty. And, and it does a, a decent job as, as everything can always be improved, but uh, it, it works more or less correctly. And how exactly Cypion can communicate with CPU serial EM? So at the moment, there is no feedback communication, I think. That, that was one project of Javier Vargas. And, and uh, that was uh, trying to uh, tell serial EM uh, what to do. But uh, at, at the moment, it is not uh, fully developed. So uh, it is only one directional uh, communication. So we can read the XML file and, and then uh, we get the, the information from there. But we cannot talk back to, to the CDLEM or EPU. Yeah. I think those are the, all the questions that were unanswered. Yeah, thank you, Carlos. No problem, Gregory. <laughs> no. so those are those are interesting questions actually. Yeah. yeah. Any other comment? Please unmute yourself. Eh? It is much nicer if we talk rather yeah. than we read. I am impressed by by how fast all this is moving. So uh, we are uh, continuously adding more and more protocols and processes, and and we are a very large group. And many people like Grigory or people outside our lab that are contributing to 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 Cypion. And the amount of stuff that can be solved is is really amazing. Any other comment? No. If not, we can finish here. No, I think. Yeah, you haven't shown it, but uh, you can go to 3D reconstruction, 3D classification, and 
So uh, there is a paper that David uh, wrote one year ago that describes all the streaming up to 3D classification. Hmm. Okay, otherwise, uh, thanks a lot to all of you. And good summer. This is the last uh, <laughs> seminar of the series before summer. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Bye.